Hello everyone, in this video we'll talk about MLflow and see it being used in example of a real machine learning development flow. We'll see an actual machine learning project in development and how MLflow can help in that case. So first let me talk about MLflow. MLflow is a popular open source software which is used throughout the machine learning lifecycle from the stage of logging results from a machine learning development process to model survey. Let's now directly jump into the actual code and see how machine learning development can be helped by using MLflow. Here we have a classifier, an image classifier which identifies cats and dogs. It's a very commonly used problem statement when people start machine learning for image recognition. So first let me quickly go over how the model is developed. I will not go into too much details there. First we need a bunch of images of cats and dogs so that we can train our model to identify a cat versus a dog. So for that we can use this library called ping image downloader and this is a small piece of code which allows it it's just one line of code which allows us to download images of cats and dogs from ping i have commented it out because i have already downloaded 100 images of cats and dogs this small piece of code allows you to validate the images that you have downloaded from ping Sometimes these images are in formats which are not compatible with TensorFlow and Keras and that's why it's important to just run this piece of code and delete any invalid images that this code throws up. Next let's go to the model training. First we are defining parameters for our model. So things like learning rate, batch size and so on. Next we define certain names for purpose of logging and for MLflow. In our case we are calling our experiment cat dog classifier mobilenet and I will come to why it's called mobilenet here and we also define a run name and you will see how it's useful later but it's the current timestamp essentially with the date and hour minute and seconds. Next we read the images that we have downloaded. We use a Keras function called image data set from direct. We specify the path of the images, uh, the validation split, like how much percentage of your images will go into test versus validation. So 20% of the images will go into validation. Uh, we specify batch size and input shape. Again, I'm not going into too much details here. We create the train data set and the validation data set. Uh, let's look at how these images look like. So this is uh, how the train data set looks like. Zeros here are cats. One is dogs. This is the validation data set. Again, ones are dogs and zeros are cats. Uh, we'll also do some data augmentation. By data augmentation, I mean we increase the number of training examples by slightly modifying the images so that the model becomes more robust. In this case, we are applying two data augmentation. One is flip horizontally and uh, we provide some rotation. So let's see how it looks like for one particular image. As you can see, some of the images are flipped horizontally and some of them are rotated uh, slightly. We apply this augmentation and we have the augmented train data. We don't apply augmentation on the test data. Now let's define the structure of our model. So the base model that we'll be using is a pre-trained model. And because I'm doing it on a CPU and not a GPU, I have kept a very simple lightweight base model, which is MobileNet. Keeping this as the base model, we add a bunch of layers. Uh, and this is the model that we create. You can see the structure of this model through this image. You have MobileNet and then you have few uh, dense layers. Next, we compile the model, we specify the loss and the metric, uh, we specify the learning rate which we had uh, defined earlier, and then we specify the callback that we'll use for TensorBoard. So uh, there's a log directory where the logs will be stored and we'll visualize using TensorBoard. Uh, finally, we call the fit function uh, where we specify the input data as the train and validation data. We specify the callbacks and start uh, the model training. So after model training is done, uh, we can now go to the actual place where MLflow will be relevant. So what we now want to do is we want to log all the results from this training exercise. So we create a new experiment. This experiment uh, will have a particular name which we specify here, experiment name. Um, as we saw earlier, experiment name is this cat dog classifier. So this will be how it will be saved in MLflow. Right? Um, then we create a run. So for this experiment or for this set of models that we're building using MobileNet, we'll have different runs where we might use different tuning parameters, right? And that is why there will be se several different runs that we'll have. This is one of the runs that we have. And run name I have specified is the timestamp, right? So every time I train a new model, we'll get a new run name based on the timestamp uh, that we currently have. So what all are we logging using MLflow? First, we are specifying the tags of the experiment itself. We are specifying the base model, which in this case is MobileNet. That's a tag that gets associated with the experiment. And we'll see how some of these things actually look in MLflow. But uh, just let me go through these lines of code. Uh, it will make much more sense when we look at this in MLflow itself. We specify the tag for the run, which is the optimizer that we have used, which is Adam and the loss that is passed categorical cross entropy. 
we log the model that we have just now trained, the parameters that are used for training this model, and some of the metrics from this model. So things like train loss, validation loss, validation accuracy, and so on. And we can also log certain artifacts. Uh, these artifacts could be files which we want to log in MLflow. In my case, I want to log the model plot that we just saw. So this particular uh, plot that we had, I want to save that as model.png. Uh, and that's mostly it. Uh, so when I run this, I get a model run ID, which is here. It will be useful at a later stage. Uh, for now, you don't have to worry too much about it. Okay, once we have done this, how does this look in MLflow? So to look at MLflow UI, you will have to go to your terminal, type in MLflow UI, press enter. It will start the MLflow instance on your laptop and will give you a particular URL, a local host URL. You will have to copy paste this. So let me copy this, open a new tab and yeah. So now you can see MLflow UI. Uh, we created an experiment called cat dog classifier. You can see there are two runs. Uh, let's focus on this one because this is what we just saw in the notebook. This was created 27 minutes ago. There's a link to the model and certain metrics. Uh, you can add more columns depending upon what you want to see in this view, but you can look at the detailed view by clicking on the run name. So you can see all the information uh, is present here. First, you will see that the parameters that we have logged are present. The metrics that we had logged are present and the tags which we had mentioned is also present here. Uh, we have the artifacts, which is the model along with all the things like requirements.txt and conduct.yaml along with uh, artifact that we had specified model.png. So the image that we uh, have of the model structure is also present here. So now let's go back to our notebook and let's see how the model training metrics looked in TensorBoard. Uh, so the blue line here is the validation data set and its accuracy. You can see validation accuracy is increasing up to 14, 15 steps and then the increase reduces. Uh, probably the highest that you can see is at step 28, right? And similarly, you can see for the loss that we have, right? Now, what I want to do is I want to run one more iteration where I want to change the number of epochs that I want to train the model for, because you can see after a point, the training accuracy is increasing, but the validation accuracy is not increasing. In fact, the loss actually increases after a particular number of uh, epochs, right? So what I want to do is change that. So in, I will go into define parameters and let me change the number of epochs to 27. And we'll see how this new iteration will be stored in MLflow and you can compare the results between different iteration. So I will run this code. It will take some time to run. So let me jump to the section where the model is trained. Okay, so the model training has been completed with 27 epochs. What I've done after that is run this piece of code which will log the new results in MLflow. So let's go to MLflow and see there how the results are being logged. So earlier we had only two runs. Now we have a third run, which was just recently trained. And you can see that it's training accuracy and train loss, validation accuracy and validation loss is different from the previous iteration that we had. You can visualize some of the results directly from this view by clicking at chart view. And uh, you can select what metrics to show here. I have selected validation accuracy to show here. I don't want to look at this particular run. So I will click hide run. And now it will show me validation accuracy of the two runs that I talked about in this video. The gray one here is the most recent one and its accuracy is higher than the first run that we saw. But you can go into more details. So let me go back to table view and click on this run name and let's look at parameters. So you can see the number of epochs here is 27. But if I go back and look at the initial one, then the number of epochs is 50. So what MLflow allows you to do through all this is to log all this data and compare results, have a history of your model training, which will be helpful when you are working on large machine learning projects. Okay, what next? So you have logged the results and the model file here, but now what we want to do is use this to make predictions. So let us now see how we can use the model that is saved as an artifact in MLflow to make predictions. So for that, you need to find out the path of your model in MLflow, which is runs and then the MLflow run ID and the model. The run ID we had already created, uh, this variable we had already created when we were logging using MLflow. So we don't have to manually write it here. Uh, we use this path and use load model function of MLflow to get our loaded model. And then we use this loaded model to make predictions 
and you can see that this image that we have of cat has a 99% probability of being a cat and a 0.4% probability of being a dog. Next, what we want to see is a feature of MLflow called model registry. So if you go to this particular tab of MLflow, you will find that uh, we can actually register certain models which we can use for production deployments. Currently, this is empty, but I will show you how you can register these models. So for that, what you need to do is you need to specify the name of the model that will appear in model registry. So I want to have one model which is cat dog classifier that is the model that i will want to use in production uh, this is the first version of the model so what i will do is the model that i have most recently created that model i will save in model registry so for that we need to run this code mlflow.register model we specify the path of this model uh, so this is the one which we had defined earlier and the model name so let me run this piece of code Okay, these lines of code have been executed and we have a registered model named cat talk classifier with a version one. We can go back to our ML flow, we refresh the page and now we can see a model here called cat dog classifier which is version one uh, we don't have this model either in staging or production uh, but that is what we'll see next but since we already have a model which is named cat dog classifier with version one we can now use this for our model prediction so what we'll do instead of uh, the earlier case where we had specified a model path and then downloaded the loaded model uh, in this case what we will do is we'll specify models colon slash model name and model version this will give us the loaded model and that is what we'll use to make the predictions right so this is another way in which you can use uh, ml flow for model serving where you can specify the final version of the model which you want to probably register but then some of these models uh, might not pass the validation checks that you want to do in your staging environment and only one of these models you want to actually deploy to production so how do you specify which model you want to put to production so for that you can transition the best model that you have to production uh, this is a simple line of code which will do that so it will take a particular model name and a particular model version and change the stage of that model to production so if i run this line of code and go back to mlflow reload the page you can see this version of the model is now in production uh, i can click on this look at these model details you can see the source run of this is specified here if i go here i will have all the details of this model like metrics artifacts and so on and you can see that uh, this particular run is registered as cat dog classifier v1 which is actually in production right so the stage is in production now that we have transitioned this model to production, we can get the MLflow model in a slightly different way. What we'll do now is specify model URI as models colon slash model name in production. And similar to previously, we'll just run this code and it will give us model predictions where it is pulling the model from the production tag that we had specified for this model. Right? Okay, the final concept, how do you create an endpoint for model server? So for that, you have to run a couple of commands in your terminal, which will start a MLflow server with your particular register model. So uh, let me first run this uh, command, which will specify the environment variable for MLflow URI. So I will go to my terminal and run this command. And second, I want to run the command to start the MLflow server with a particular model. So I want to use the model which I have currently in production and specify the port number here. So the port number is uh, 7777. Let me paste. Let me copy this and paste it here. So it will start the MLflow server. The server has started. Let's go back to Jupyter Notebook. We specify the endpoint with the port number that we have here, slash invocations, and pass the image as a request. So if we run this piece of code, we'll again have the image that we wanted to make predictions for. So this is a very quick guide of how to use MLflow in your real life machine learning project. If you like this video, Press the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching the video.